Welcome to CFRV. My name is Ben. I am your host and I am coming to you today. Um, we are doing a radical change in our plans. Let me tell you what's going on. So we are currently in Muleshoe, Texas. We were headed to the Rio Grande del Norte to do our first community council for CFRV season one with the CFRV insiders. I have been monitoring a situation on the GeoPro, which we call the birdhouse. I've been monitoring a situation since we were in Florida. I first noticed that it appeared as though the left-hand portion of our Dexter Torflex axle was sagging. Okay, so I want you to look at this gap right here. Um, when I measured it, this tire was, you know, roughly a, around five inches or so gap between the tire and up inside the bottom of the, uh, the fender well. Now, when I measured it last, which was on the 15th of May, back in Fort Worth, I had three inches gap on the left-hand tire, which is the slide side. And this is probably gonna be dark. So back on the, back on May the 15th, when I measured, when I started monitoring this, I had three inches of clearance in Fort Worth before we headed out towards New Mexico. We traveled 300 miles west. We got here to Mule Shoe, about halfway into our journey into where we were going in New Mexico, and I had two inches of travel, which indicates I potentially had a rapidly changing problem. So, and that's, uh, that's not good if something changes rapidly. Anyway, um, I wanted to point out where we're at before we head back to Fort Worth because that is what we're doing. We're turning around. I've made a few initial calls. I've checked in with Rockwood. They were very helpful. I spoke with Deb in customer service and I've also spoke with Dexter Axel. So what we're going to do is we're gonna head back to Fort Worth. We're gonna see how this does. The, the danger or the worry here is I do not want that side to drop so far that that tire starts rubbing on structure. Obviously, that would be really bad. The fender liner is plastic. It would wear through that very quickly. Um, the next layer up from that is aluminum framing and fiberglass. And yeah, it would get ugly. It'd start shredding tires. It'd start shredding structure of the RV. And so, yeah, we just do not want that. Anyway, I'm gonna head back to Fort Worth. I'm hoping it stays at two inches. If we get back to Fort Worth and that gap has shrunk even further, then we're probably just gonna park it there and we're gonna get the axle shipped to Fort Worth. If we get into Fort Worth and we maintain about the same gap of about two inches, then we're gonna lighten the load we're gonna have the axle shipped to a repair center up in Elkhart, Indiana, where the axles originate from, uh, because that is the quickest way to get an axle, is have it delivered somewhere right there in Elkhart. Uh, according to Dexter, that can happen in roughly about two weeks or so. And so, yeah, we'll get it fixed up there in Elkhart, and then we will pick up and resume and replan on CFRV season one. So that is what's going on. I'm gonna check in again, hopefully in Fort Worth. <laughs> if everything goes well, I'm gonna check in again in Fort Worth. And if it doesn't go well, then I will probably be uh, joining you from alongside the road where my tire is shredding the RV and vice versa. So anyway, here's hoping for the best. And for those of you who are new to RVing or just checking into RVing, uh, you can plan like crazy, but bottom line, stuff happens in RVing. And this is one of those things. I want to bring you along for the journey of getting this fixed so that you can learn. Because uh, it is going to be <laughs> definitely a, 
uh, a learning experience, that's for sure. And it's completely disruptive to our planned travel season. But man, um, this stuff happens, you know? And when it happens, you just gotta roll with the punches, deal with it, adapt and improvise, and keep on going. Because bottom line, man, we love RVing, even when stuff like this happens. And also, I spent a lot of time researching this GeoPro before we bought this model. It's definitely not perfect, uh, but I definitely still uh, about a year and a half into this purchase, if I had it to make all over again, I would probably choose the exact same RV. So anyway, enough talking. Let's, uh, let's get on the road for Fort Worth. Just got back to Fort Worth, just got parked. Gonna get set up here in a sec. The good news is, is it looks like it is virtually unchanged. Still about two inches, just under. That's good news because that gives me confidence that we're going to be able to run it that way until we get it repaired safely. Anyway, just glad to bank it back safe and sound. Definitely want to avoid any, uh, any damage to the, uh, to the RV. So anyway, a successful day. And I don't know if you can see it from the footage or not, but whew, it was a beautiful day. Spe <coughs> especially after uh, two or three days of thunderstorms and pouring rain. So count your blessings, right? Well, I am back and it is the next day. The rain squall that we had is blown over and we got sunshine once again. Woohoo! And uh, I've been on the line with Rockwood and with Dexter Axel and I have a completed plan. So here's what I'm gonna do. In order to get this changed out the quickest, which Dexter said they could have an axle um, basically ready to deliver in two weeks, I decided to have that sent to Millersburg, Indiana, which is right by Elkhart, Indiana. And Millersburg actually is where the birdhouse was made. And so it's gonna go to the Rockwood Service Center where they do factory repairs on customers' rigs. Uh, it's actually a very simple repair. Uh, it is only four bolts, two wires, and of course you gotta change out the wheels and tires. I'm not sure how the axle arrives. If it arrives loaded with the drums and the hubs already installed, then all they have to do is swap out the wheels and tires, you know? Um, but if the axle comes bare, then they'll have to swap out the hubs, brakes, you know, brake drums, stuff like that. So anyway, here's what we're gonna do. Because our clearance did not change from mule shoe to here, we still have about two inches. What I'm gonna do is I am going to lighten up as much stuff as we can. The two bikes are staying here in Fort Worth. The bike rack is staying here in Fort Worth. That's a bummer because man, I was just got that hitch fixed and I was really looking forward to bikes again. Um, normally we hang our chairs right there, um, but these two chairs, I'm gonna try to clear out enough space in the pickup truck to be able to carry chairs in the pickup because we're just absolutely trying to get as much weight out of the birdhouse as possible. So generally speaking, and it's probably a mess in here. Hello, spicy dog. Okay, generally speaking, we have got stuff underneath both dinette seats and I want all that out. 
um, underneath here in the under bunk storage area and then in the middle bunk and maybe even the top bunk too. So let's go from the top down. Uh, we've got all the bedding and sleeping bags needed for our grandbabies. And they are in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. And so we may go ahead and store that stuff here because we won't need that anymore. Now, anything else of any substantial weight, we're going to try to remove from here and carry in the pickup. So yeah, just, man, any weight we can get rid of in the birdhouse to help us get to Millersburg safely is going to be removed. What do you think, Spice? Hey, how much weight are you? Should we leave you, huh? Or should we take you? <laughs> Anywho, hello, Mitch. Hello. So I'm also going to leave as much stuff at, from the pickup truck as possible. So it's a little hard to see, but the bulkiest items, just because they're the hardest or they're just, you know, they're bulky to carry. Uh, I'm going to leave Michelle's scooter and I'm going to leave my one wheel. And then there's just going to be some other miscellaneous stuff like photography gear that I was looking forward to using, but I'm just going to pare everything down to the absolute minimum. Travel as light as possible. Anyway, that is the plan. If you want to learn from this, like if you have any repairs coming up or I've heard from other GeoPro owners that had the same axle problem, if you want to see the process that I used to get this repair initiated, it's really kind of long and drawn out, too much so for a video. So I'm gonna list that on uh, an article in the CFRV University. Go to crowdfreerv.com forward slash university. Look for the article that, that has axle replacement in the title and you will find it. Okay, well, that's it for uh, part one of this video. Part two is gonna be the actual replacement of it, which is gonna happen back in the birdhouse's place of origin, Millersburg, Indiana. All right, thanks for watching guys. Hope this is helpful and uh, stay tuned. We'll uh, keep you posted as we progress on this. Bye.